All right, everyone, good evening. Welcome to tonight's council meeting for October 19th, 2021. We will call the meeting to order at 7.30 p.m. <clears throat> Resolved that the agenda for the October 19th, 2021 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. All in favor? It's carried. Resolved that the minutes of the October 5th, 2021 regular council meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Moving on to reception of delegations and hearings. We did have a reception for Sergeant Joe Campbell who did have to cancel this evening. However, you will see the analysis on your screen on 4.1 regarding Swan River and prepared by D Division that uh, Sergeant Duncan was going to present to us. So um, have a peruse through that. Uh, Mr. Poole, if you could speak on this, and then Councillor Delorier, I'll take your question. Or did you have a question? No. Sorry. Uh, that was I, Council I'm, White. Go ahead, sir. Oh, you first. Just to let Council know, uh, we will be rescheduling for Staff Sergeant Duncan to come and, and talk about the detailed uh, analysis for this one River area. Uh, this report will be part of our information package if we get to speak to the ministers during the AMM conference. So that, uh, well, I'll speak to that later, but uh, yeah, this is for your information. And, and I would like the staff sergeant to come and to speak in front of council to uh, discuss in detail. Absolutely. Councillor White? Uh, just a couple of comments. I'll put you think about it. Prepare for the questions that I have to ask regardless. Uh, he was talking about it takes uh, three hours and 32 minutes to do a return trip to Dauphin. With the, uh, I have difficulty with the word uh, to ap apprehend it. They use the term uh, people with a mental illness. I'm sure there's more to it than what it appears to be. I, I, I don't know what that means when you apprehend a person with a mental illness. I'm I have suspicion that people leave our hospital uh, with transportation with mental illnesses, like with the RCMP. So there is uh, 175 calls annually. And I, I, don't, I never saw in there where they said, it sort of said three out of 32 minutes, so let's go there and back. No, they got to stop at the hospital, they got to get them evaluated. And so that's the driving time for sure. Right. But I think it's got to be a lot more time than, than that suggested. Much more and that. I had a discussion with, uh, I can't remember his name, but we had a manager's review today and uh, it's basically the staff sergeant's uh, superiors come in from D Division and ask this, or they're asking CEOs of municipalities just random questions, what we think of the, 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 the service that we're getting for, for what we pay. And there, it was pretty strong that, uh, <clears throat> that uh, you know, the, the mental illness side going to Dauphin wasn't wasn't too much of a, a bird in their bonnet as much as the transfers uh, uh, to the justice system. We used to, I can't remember what they're called, it's escaping me. But anyways, we're, we're not taking them to Dauphin or Brandon uh, uh, like we used to. We, they have to go all the way to Winnipeg, so that's a, it is tying up a lot of our man hours in this detachment and it's it's easy once a week trip for for uh, tying up an officer that's that's a lot of hours that we're paying in this detachment uh, for those transfers to happen for the justice system so the RCMP is about to fight back and and as Staff Sergeant Duncan uh, I'm sure he'll elaborate when he comes at the next uh, regular meeting but that was definitely their focus of uh, so this is very misleading yeah. It says it takes three hours and thirty-two minutes to go back and forth to Dauphin. So not going to, they're not even doing that. So why would they put it in there? Well, I, I don't know. I Where don't do think I? Staff Sergeant Duncan did this analysis. This comes from D Division. But uh, as far as I don't I'm expect just, you to know, by the way. 
Yeah, yeah, I'm just letting you know that they did not focus so much on the on the on the rides to Dauphin for the the mental illness aspect. It was the transfers for the justice system. Um, well, I am because uh, I do think it's a big deal. Because yeah. I don't think it's going to be three hours and thirty two minutes. It's, and again, it's a, it, they've got transfers for justice system. Now we've got transfers for apprehended mental crisis. I'm having difficulty. With, I don't like the word apprehension if somebody's got a mental illness. It's just too strong for me personally. The other thing uh, past Councillor Grady alluded to, I, I looked at it again with those numbers, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m., 50% of the crimes were reported. Well, that doesn't mean that's when, and we all know, that doesn't mean that's when it happened. That's when they found out they'd been broken into, I would suspect. So uh, uh, that's another lies, damn lies, and statistics. Benjamin Disraeli, Prime Minister of England, Jewish guy. At 3 a.m., only 7%. Well, who's running around at 3, checking to see if they got broken into at 3 in the morning? They don't find out till 7 a.m. So I'm not, I'm uncomfortable that 3 a.m. to 6.59, empty spot in there where we don't have surveillance, whatever the word is, because there's nothing reported in. They don't necessarily mean the same. That's all I had to, Your Worship. Thank you, Councillor White, and some great questions that uh, <clears throat> can be asked to uh, D Division as well as uh, Sergeant Duncan, Councillor Delorier. Um, just a comment more than anything, and you know this report kind of tells us what those of us, who, you know, all of us that live in the community, you know, this report goes from 2017 to 2020, and basically tells us what we already knew that crime was on the rise. But you know, the the one sentence that you, know, you, you talk about things that can be you know obfuscated. Um, you know, the calls for uh, service in Swan River Municipal Detachment are the highest among the 22 detachments in, in the West Division. There's no, there's no hiding around that. So I, I, I hope that that is going to carry some weight when we meet with them in November. Um, you know, that's huge. Just, we're, we're number one, and that's not a good thing in this case. And, and, what, and I like, what are they doing? Absolutely. Thank so you. great, great question, Councillor Deloria, that we will uh, bring forward to the. The minister, did you have anything else, no, sir? Good. Okay. Did, sorry, did we lose Councillor Morio? It looks like it, yeah. Or did, am I just? He should be back. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead, Councillor Bobic. Thank you, uh, Deputy Mayor. Uh, am I under the understanding when you're explaining the transfers and the cost of that that? The cost of that is borne by the budget which is received from the RCMP from the town swanner. That's correct. Okay, so I'll use I'll use it for instance. If there's a person from Calgary that has to use or that been used in this service, does that not take it into consideration that why as our ratepayers are paying for people to, from outside our constituents? I I was some calculation there, or like I mean. No, that that wouldn't be in that. That'd be just like someone from CAMSAC committing a crime and getting arrested here. They don't they don't charge that jurisdiction. I, I guess what I'm getting at is if it's gone through the hospital, then there's only one hospital in the valley. Right. So I mean, that would mean that we bear the entire thing or the budget of the RCMP. Yeah, okay. and it's a 70-30 split cost from the feds to the town. Thank you, Councillor Bobic. Uh, just to, to let Council know that uh, Councillor Morio did have to step away, but he will uh, be back when he can be. <clears throat> um, any further questions on, on that analysis? Otherwise, we'll save those questions for uh, the next Council meeting or the next available time for Staff Sergeant Duncan. Councillor Delorier. Um, I guess just one comment to Mr. Poole. Uh, if we could possibly meet with Staff Sergeant Duncan prior to AMM, you know, I, every, it's, it's, it's a month away and it seems like a long time, but it'll go by quickly. But it'd be good to meet with him about this report prior to meeting with D Division. The plan is November, the first meeting in November. Okay. Excellent, thank you. All right. Uh, moving on, communications 6.1, you will see 
um, a sponsorship letter there resolved that adult and teen challenge sponsorship letter be accepted as received moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor White. Discussion, you'll see that sponsorship letter there. Hearing no questions, all those in favor? It's carried. Moving on to reports of committees. Um, Director of Public Works Report, Mr. Harvey. Uh, yeah, so I just had a late addition to it. I had a meeting with the uh, Urban Forest Committee. Um, so that was added. If you checked it over the weekend, that wasn't on there, but it is on there now. Um, they were just asking for some watering for the trees on Main Street uh, because it's been dry for a number of years and then some pruning and uh, we were able to get uh, that done for this year for them. So what they've asked for has been taken care of. I do apologize, we should have moved that first. So resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Uh, discussion for Mr. Harvey, Councillor White. Uh, firstly, thank you for communicating with the uh, Urban Forest people. I'm sure they appreciate it and you're volunteered uh, to work collaboratively and whatever they call it when they trim the trees, prune them. Uh, that's, those people uh, have made our, they're part of the, the ancestry of our town. They're the original people and they're still working hard. And it's nice that the town looks after them as they should. Propane bangers, I see that what it said is we've applied for propane bangers, and that's for the birds around the airport, obviously. Uh, that's just happening? Uh, like 90% no, of they're them. out there already. When did they get out there? Uh, a week or two weeks ago. I would encourage in, in the future, uh, I think of Aston, the, the crops apparently are appropriate around there, but the water is the big attraction as anything. <coughs> So they may want to put the things up earlier or, or look at options. Gar Falcons do really well. Can't run drones around there, but the drone cruising over there would probably get their butts out of there quick. Dressed as a falcon. I think they actually have these things. Uh, cemetery fall cleanup. I'm not privy to what that means. Uh, so we used to do a fall cleanup out at the cemetery, uh, but then we haven't done that for the past few years because <coughs> there was. Um, from the community uh, so I met with the cemetery committee a couple times this summer and uh, I discussed it with one of the members that had raised issues the last time it was done and we talked about advertising so we've advertised it a few times this summer uh, we talked to the uh, businesses in town that sell flowers I talked to them this spring to let them know that we'd be starting that up again and uh, passed it on to some of the memorial companies, but essentially that we're gonna get back into the fall cleanup. And uh, so anything that's mounted on the headstone can get left, but anything that's in the grass, we've asked them to remove because uh, it just collects leaves all winter. So it's hard to clean up. And if we ever do need to move a headstone, we can move the headstone, but anything plastic that's in the ground, it gets frozen in and you can't move it without breaking it. Wonderful. So those people, I'm assuming there's only a handful that you really have to know. The ones with stuff goes out too far for cleanup. Those people are directly contacted. Or they find uh, out well, there's a large number of them throughout the cemetery, and we don't have contact info. So that's why we did the advertising campaign. Okay. And the stuff that's removed will go on to pallets, so that uh, if they do come looking for it, then they oh, can be wonderful. directed to the pallets. It's a sensitive spot. We, I think uh, we have to be aware of the concerns of uh, those people. Thank you. It sounds like a great show. Thank you, Councillor White. Councillor Bobbitt. <coughs> yes, if I could. Uh, so, if there's an interment in the near future here, is there a, an allowance for flowers and stuff to stay there for a certain period of time after? Like, yeah, so we are collecting 
like if there's a, a tournament tomorrow, okay, then it would just stay there until next spring, okay, or well next fall. Yeah. Uh, we we're just doing it at this point, and then we won't be back there. But uh, there's just there's some flowers like that have been there for so long, like the um, the plastic flowers, they started to disintegrate, and so this way we can move those, but there's it's kind of subjective, right? Like if we just went in there and, okay, that one looks old, that one looks old, but to some other people they say, well, no, that's got five years of life left in it. So this way we've advertised, so if they do like their flowers, they can take them and then put them back in May. And that was an advertisement to put stuff back in May. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bobick. Any further questions for uh, Mr. Harvey? Hearing none, all those in favor it is carried. Moving on to other reports. Resolved that the se September 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councillor Vovic, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion, you will see a report there on your screen. Hearing none, all those in favor, it is carried. Um, moving on to council and CAO reports. Let's start with you today, Mr. Poole, and then we'll move on to councillors. Uh, I did not submit a written report, but uh, just for council's information the the amm conference this fall uh i do have councillor morio councillor or deputy mayor Mintoni, and councillor friesen electing to stay home if need be uh, i will find out thursday if i can attend the amm as a representative of the mwwa if so uh, one of those three can attend in person if if not that will be the three stay according to my poll uh, and the, just expect an email with the uh, tentative meeting with the ministers we haven't confirmed that that's going to happen but uh, we do have an information package for council that will come uh, tomorrow so just to give you guys a chance to review and make changes or additions and deletions uh, I guess I just wanted to bring it up. I could do this at a cow meeting, but uh, why not? The town supper we usually have. I just felt with the you know the attendance and and with not, us not having a vaccine policy quite yet, uh, I wanted to just throw it to council, and we can discuss this further at a cow meeting. But just to have a package to employees and councillors, um, like a hoodie or a t-shirt or, or something like that with the town logo. I think we can do more of that, but that was just the thought. That's coming at a county. And just as I mentioned before, I met with the uh, staff sergeant today, and uh, I can have a, an in-depth report on, on the managerial review uh, that was performed today with the staff sergeant and his superior. So there's some, there's some concerns that I brought forward that, uh, that they ensured uh, that they would look into and the most important one being shifting the man hours so there's uh they believe that that can happen and there's no reason why it can't so we have some movement there and we'll be looking after or going after that in the near future um that's about it thank you mr pool councillor friesen I uh, just want to mention the uh, communities of care. Hats off to them for a great job they did of the museum. We figured between six and seven hundred bodies went through there. Um, that was, uh, we think, maybe sixty to seventy volunteers, and the rest were all participants. And we had no issues. I think the kids had a blast. And hats off to the COPP, who uh, we decorated the night before out at the museum and didn't know how safe all that stuff would be. And um, the guys that were working that night just 
cruised around the, some, around the museum two or three times that night just to make sure it was safe. Um, thanks to Darren uh, for meeting with the urban forest crew. I apologize. I ended up having to go to work that morning, so I missed it. And good job with the cemetery. I think it's looking good, and people are taking their in-ground articles away and uh, can bring them back in the spring. And I think that's all. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Friesen. Councillor Bobbick. Uh, not too much to report, just uh, with the uh, watershed and moving forward, trying to clean up some jobs that are done around the valley here that were on the slate. Uh, there's a new grow program out there that uh, has been initiated by the province. Funding has been put in place. I'm going to use a number, I think it's $10 million or put in the interest off that will support buffer zones, riparian areas, stuff like that, wet potholes that landowners will be able to get paid for instead of filling them in and knocking them down. So that's something new for the watershed. <laughs> so it's a big factor on us right now. And uh, we've actually committed to this year and we're already working on next year. That's it. Thank you, Councillor Bobbick. Councillor White, I think you had a question for Councillor Bobbick. Uh, firstly, thank you. I think that's a fantastic concept of paying people not to drain these swamps and these sloughs. One, they hold the water table, table up, so that when we have a dry year, you still have water. Two, from a wildlife perspective, from an ecosystem perspective, it's unbelievable. You said you're paying them not to drain them. Can you expand on that? Uh, I'll use pothole, for example. Yeah. So, uh, um, farmer has a pothole in the middle of the field. Some years it's wet, you can't farm. Some years you can't farm. So with this program, you will get paid to leave it alone if he farms through it, he still gets paid. If he doesn't get it next year, it's a wet year, he doesn't get it, he still gets paid. So it's a 10-year program. So if he doesn't farm... As long as he doesn't fill it in. As long as he doesn't fill in and let the water come back, it'll leave a little... Yeah, for, but if it's a dry year and he happens to worry, it's not... It doesn't have to be designated as a wetland. It can be just a pot. No. There's certain areas where... And it's surprisingly... How many of those areas there is in the valley? That um, this year, some of them have been farmed and some of them have been worked through. But at the same time, when instead of filling them in so they'll never collect water again, mm -hmm. this program <coughs> leave it. They, and there is also buffer zones for like trees, <coughs> grass areas, long rivers, and stuff. Like that. Perfect. Great. Please, uh, as an individual, thank your committee. That's huge. You're welcome. I would strongly suggest just to stop in here if you have time and speak with uh, uh, Sam or Eddie there. They're very uh, knowledgeable on this and uh, they can give you the whole perspective of it probably better than I can. So. Who's with Eddie? Uh, Samantha is her name. Sorry. Thank you. I will. Thank you, Councillor Bob. Again, Councillor White, your report, please. Oh. Because I'm a concerned citizen, I, uh, as, as representing myself, I went to hear the two premier uh, wannabes, the two women. So we're going to have a woman premier, that's for sure, which will be wonderful for our community, uh, for Manitoba as a whole. Uh, I think it's important to stay educated about those things and see how they think about their do. So two wonderful candidates, so I appreciated that. And we talked about CT scan, obviously, that's why we go to those places. Uh, October 13th, uh, PMH AGM, and uh, the COVID costs, uh, that stuff's adding up to millions of dollars for PMH, that's for sure. And wait times are, are becoming an issue because of the COVID beds being, because of COVID and all the beds being full, uh, wait times are backing up to some crazy numbers of wait times. So I encourage you to be cognizant of that. And I had a really pleasant uh, morning. I went to the Swan Valley Business Consortium uh, meeting. Uh, lots of really wonderful things happening in our community relative to helping people who can't help themselves. And uh, that sort of slides into my next meeting. And uh, the CMHA, if you can correct me if I'm wrong, are negotiating with government relative to building a new multi million dollar facility to house. In the short term, there's two phases. In the short term, a smaller number have offices where they could have all, they could have drugs and alcohol, they could have Al Anon, they could have CMHA. You can have multiple professional offices in there, so if somebody comes with an, an issue, 
at the present now, they walk out of Main Street, they gotta go five blocks down the road, and they disappear by the time they get there. So they hope there are many offices in that building. I was excited about that. And uh, 22 members now in, uh, in COPP, and uh, thanks to you, sir, uh, and your team, uh, your, your deputy worship, whatever the appropriate title is. It's a big deal, and it's, uh, it's working well. I talked to a couple of retired citizens uh, at the lake the other day, and they're excited, they like doing it, they're staying away, and they, and they think they're helping, the, they are helping the community. In a sad moment for me, uh, I uh, went to the Concerned Citizens of North Parkland, and myself and I think three or four others have been there since day one, nine years. And uh, we uh, dissolved the, uh, the company with $863.39. We've given, rolled that money over into the Community Foundation. That's where that money will go. And you know, you feel a little sad. You sometimes think you haven't accomplished anything, and no bricks and mortar were laid. But thank goodness for James Wigley. James attended the meeting. And James says, I hope you guys realize that what we're doing here with the business consortium, what they're doing with CMHA, all those things evolve from what those girls, the majority had done all that work over the last nine years, lobbying for help for people who are mentally handicapped, drug handicapped, alcohol handicapped, homeless people. And uh, I just think as our leader, uh, Amy Shaw, 96 years old, she's sitting there today chairing the meeting, bright, articulate, concerned, and because what James said, I'm so thankful he was there because as you know, Mrs. Shaw, all the things that are happening because you guys started it. So I, I, I had a good feeling then because sometimes you want to see something when you work. Yeah, as a coach, you want to win, right? Uh, and I'm not sure that I saw that we weren't winning and when I reflect back, we did. So I would ask uh, your worship that uh, yourself and or Mayor Jacobson drop a note to, to, uh, to Amy Shaw as, uh, as, a, as a chair, past chair, our only chair since day one chair of the Concerned Citizens of Park Parkland and complimenting them for the work they've done to bring that issue to the forefront. Homelessness and meth methamphetamines and yeah, so boy, I'm going to give that Wiggly guy a big hug when I see him because he, he brought it together and I, I, I personally was missing it. So uh, it was an emotional time when I went home. This lady has worked so hard and, and he made it realize it, it was good what, what she'd done. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor White. <clears throat> Councillor Delorier? Uh, the only meeting I had since the last meeting was a uh, shared services meeting with uh, Swan Valley West, and I'll fill you in on the details of that in camera tonight. Thank you, sir. And uh, I know that uh, I don't really know if it's orthodox or not, but uh, Mr. Fedorchuk, Darren Fedorchuk, anything to report to us today? No, nothing substantial. It's business as usual. Thank you, sir. Mr. Brennan Fedorchuk? I'm putting you on the spot as well. Uh, as far as the summary goes? Yeah, if you have any, any anything to share with us today, um, I, I, it's not usually orthodox, but I'm chairing today's meeting, so I'm going to ask if you have any the, any reports or anything to share. Well, I mean, I wasn't prepared, but yeah. So uh, as far as the parks go, our bathrooms are closed for the season. It's getting getting cold outside, so if anybody has, has any questions about that, um, they're closed. Uh, the arena's operating as normal. Minor hockey's going full war. We're starting to get some games here, so that's nice to see. And um, the pool is operating as normal as well so that's all i got excellent thank you sir and uh cfo ganita any anything to share with us today oh, thank you thank you sir and um i guess just from myself a couple notes uh to go along with some of the items that were discussed. Um, Mr. Poole, in regards to the town supper that you mentioned, I think your idea is, is grand. I think that uh, maybe to add to that could be some shop or some local shop, local items, um, you know, items that could be whatever the budget might be, but uh, all local items. Um, so just a thought. I know that uh, 
our organization is doing the same thing, not having a party, but uh, local items are being handed out as, as little Christmas gift bags. So something to think about. Spooktober, just want to thank uh, everyone, Councillor Friesen, your team, and everyone else there who did a spectacular job. Um, Mr. Poole as well was in attendance, and uh, my little guy came home and, and told me, Dad, you know what? Mr. Poole scared me. He had a chainsaw, so uh, it was pretty cool to hear our CAO be so involved in uh, in that so thank you for that mr Poole, and just uh, a huge shout out to the copp volunteers who did patrol um, they were out for three nights i do believe patrolling the museum grounds so thank you to all those volunteers there um, the business consortium and task force for those of you who aren't heavily involved in those please join uh, in sometime for those business consortium meetings um, and hear what's going on. There's some really good things happening there as long as well as with the task force and the subcommittees with that um, and Councillor White to go along with uh, Mr. Wigley and the concerned citizens of the North Parkland their legacy even though that they've dissolved today their legacy will go on in the project uh, the uh, uh, tier one housing committee and know that your work on that committee and the work that Miss Shaw and Miss Fullerton and her group have done will leave a legacy behind on the new ventures that are that are coming forward. So, and yes, we will. Uh, I, th I think that would be prudent for the for our town to send a letter out to Miss Shaw and their their group. Um, for meetings, I did have the airport commission meeting. I think that was a couple weeks ago, but I did not report on that. Uh, you'll see a piece come in um, under new business. We do have a meeting coming up next week as well to finalize some other arrangements that we had had in place so that we'll share more information as that becomes available. Um, other than that, that is everything I have. All right. Moving on, new business, 8.1 um, Airport Commission Municipal Agreement. Um, you'll see that coming in as new business. Um, so I can speak a little bit to that and then uh, maybe Mr. Ganita or Mr. Poole can speak as well. Um, there was some concern with updating the agreement and uh, that that should be done at the council level um, and then councils took it back to the commission to draft up what the thoughts were and then to bring it back to council to see if that was something that we would look at um, we're not looking for anything today i think that's something that we'll discuss at a cow meeting but mr pool if you'd like to speak to it and then perhaps mr ganita uh as for the changes, everyone can see them. I, actually, what I was going to state was that this would uh, be preferred to be discussed at uh, next week's count meeting. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll just r jump to Mr. Ganita first, if he had anything to add, and then to you, Councillor Delorier. Mr. Ganita? Nothing to add. Thank you. Councillor Delorier. I guess um, just to thank the Airport Commission for presenting this draft to the councils, and I agree we'll talk about it at our council meeting, but I think, and then subsequent to that, I think we need to have a meeting with all, all four municipalities to discuss it. So, um, I mean, this is this is what we were after for, so we can frame the discussions now that we have this, I think we can go ahead with that. Absolutely, and that's what the commission took back and, and prepared this draft for for discussion, which we will have at our count meeting. And then, as you said, we will prepare for a, uh, um, whether it be at the G4 um, or a special meeting of all councils. All right, moving on to 10. Resolved that the accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General account check numbers 28143 to number 28212, totaling 
$534,288.01 as listed on Schedule A. Payroll account checks number 4966 to number 4973, totaling $81,285.15 as listed on Schedule B. Direct deposit in the amount of $27,374.34 as per Schedule C. Direct deposits totaling $21,693.90 as listed on Schedule D. And direct deposits in the amount of $2,058.31 as per Schedule E. You will see those uh, broken down as well as um, check explanations. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion, Councillor Delorier. Uh, 28143. Uh, Global Star Canada. Do we have Do we have a satellite phone, or, or what is that for? I'm guessing the fire department. I'm just trying to. Find you, Deputy Mayor. Absolutely, Mr. Fedor. Uh, sure. Global Star Canada is our satellite phone that was purchased with the old uh, Emergency Measures Group. It's still active. We still pay airtime. Um, we are working on reducing that fee substantially. We're just kind of waiting to see how the agreements go. Okay. Thank you, sir. Anything further, Councillor Delorey? Any further discussion, Councillor Bobick? Uh, I also see we purchased the uh, Samsung Galaxy tablet for the fire hall. I'm just wondering if that was sourced so local locally. Uh, no, it was bought from Samsung itself. It's a specialized rugged, rugged tablet. That tablet contains all of our pre-plans, our contact information, our mapping. Um, it's part of the command unit. It's our part of our first response system. Okay, thank you. Also, check number 28182 for CB and CNB Sterling. That's for the asphalt and stuff out here. So is there any recourse or money coming back from the highway department for that or is that? Yeah, I, sorry. The, Mr. Harvey? Yeah, I sent an invoice out to uh, Manto Infrastructure for the asphalt portion. Okay, just for the asphalt portion. Okay. So just one other question. I asked a question in the last meeting here on the warranty of the, is it a pool heater or a pool pump we were putting in that had been needed to be replaced? Mm, the pool heat. I don't. I don't remember that in my notes. I just remember asking the question. It had lasted boiler. seven years. What what the warranty was on the new one we're putting in? Oh, on the boiler. Oh, the boiler. Know. Yes, thank you. Okay. You know what? I did not follow up with Brendan uh, to to check the warranty. I just would hate to see us put the same thing in. And Mr. Brendan Fedorchuk, do you have an answer, perhaps? I know it's a one-year limited warranty on the actual work itself, and I believe it's a five-year five-year warranty on the boiler. Okay. Thank you, sir. And just one other question while I seem to be talking here. Um, on the grader, we purchased a new grader, correct? That's correct. Uh, delivery date? Uh, either this later this week or the start of next week. Okay. So I'm... Um, Still looking to get the price. If you could look up the price of the purchase of the 140. In, tw in 2001. In 2001. And the price of this new grader, I would like to compare how many months, what a month it cost. So. Yep. Okay, good. would be great. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bobick. Further discussion? Councillor White, was that just a, an itch? <laughs> All right. All in favor? It is carried. Moving on, 10.2 financial statements. Resolved that the financial statements for the nine months ending September 30th, 2021, be adopted as received. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Just uh, comments to CFO Ganita. Thank you for preparing those so well and taking the time to submit those and, and 
in full detail. We appreciate that. And hearing nothing further, all in favor? It is carried. Story 10.3. Resolved that 500 that the $500 contribution included in the 2021 Swan River Handy Transit Van operating budget be made to the Handy Transit Van Vehicle Replacement Reserve. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? It's carried. Moving on to bylaws. Resolved that bylaw number 13 slash 2021 being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 3 slash 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for rehabilitation of the water mains, water and sewer services, road structure and drainage, and the provisions for temporary water services, including all auxiliary works thereof on Main Street from Provincial Trunk Highway 83 to CN Rail Crossing be read a second time. Moved by Councillor Delorier, second by Councillor Bobick. Discussion? All those in favor? It is carried. Eleven two. <clears throat> Resolved that bylaw number fourteen slash twenty twenty one being a bylaw of the town of Swan River to amend its bylaw nine slash twenty twenty, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center Whirlpool, HVAC and building envelope, including gathering, planning, designing, and all other related requirements be read a second time. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? Councillor Povic. Could you just give me a quick breakdown of what we're repairing there? It's H HVAC and up inside the building? Like yeah, there was a tender done last year. For Brendan, did you want to explain this? Yeah, I can. So there's a tender done last year for the HVAC replacement. Uh, there was issues with the uh, exhaust system as well as the supply ventilation. Um, as far as the whirlpool goes, that was a separate tender. Uh, basically, a request for proposal to see if we can fix the current tank uh, instead of ripping it out and replacing it. Um, Paradise Leisure uh, Pools came and redid the liner in the um, swirl pool transitioning it from a poly uh, polyethylene liner to a uh, basically a, a burnt on plastic liner uh, and it's so far it's worked um, to uh, the way they expect it and the HVAC system's also been replaced as well and it's it's working uh, to my knowledge uh, as a spec a couple of hiccup issues with the ventilation as far as the exhausting and supply goes, but I think we've hammered that out, but that's pretty well the summary. So it's basically all. Okay. Okay. I think that was a delay. Oh, sorry. So it's basically all done. Uh, correct, yeah. Um, sewer and Poland was the, was the uh, contractor on the ventilation. It's complete. Paradise Pools is also complete. There's still some skimmer work to be done, but we've pushed that to 2022. Um, but yeah, it's, it's complete. So again, I'll go back to the fact of, of warranties and, and liabilities of this thing. That we're repairing something that's gone wrong, or we not? Hopefully, we're not insane. We have better warranties, better equipment. Is that what we're doing? Yeah, like we. I guess we we trust the the con. You know, we had reputable reputable contractors come in and. And uh, the warranty that is in there is, is pretty standard for the equipment that we purchased. Like we haven't purchased any extended warranty. But. Mr. Brennan Fedorchuk, anything to add to that? 
in regards to warranties? Yeah, just to add on what uh, CEO Poole said, it was just um, installation warranty of a year. And then obviously on the parts, uh, the only major thing we installed mechanically was an exhaust fan. Everything else was ductwork, that sort of thing. Um, as far as this whirlpool goes, it's it was stated in the quote that um, that solution was not under warranty. Um, however, that's that's the risk that was taken at the time um, under CAO Kroll, and it's paid off. So, so was there an engineer involved on this? What decisions you made to replace? Yes, I'm fine. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bobick. Thank you, Mr. Brennan Fedorchuk. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. And moving on to 11.3, this is a third reading and will be a recorded vote. Resolved that bylaw number 13 slash 2021 being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 3 slash 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for rehabilitation of the water mains, water and sewer services, road structure and drainage, and the provisions for temporary water services, including all auxiliary works there, thereof and sorry, thereof on Main Street from Provincial Trunk Highway number 83 to the CN Rail Crossing be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Bobick, second by Councillor Delorier. Discussion? Councillor Bobick. If I may, or Deputy Mayor, is, did this come in on budget? Under budget, actually. Did? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Harvey, Mr. Poole. Further discussion? It's recorded vote. All in favor? It is carried. Oh, screen moved all by itself. Uh, res uh, <coughs> pardon me. Resolve that bylaw number 14 slash 2021 being a bylaw of the Town of Swan River to amend its bylaw number 9 slash 2020, which provided for the expenditure and borrowing of funds for the repair and renovation of the Richardson Recreation and Wellness Center Whirlpool, HVAC and building envelope, including gathering, planning, designing, and all other related requirements be read a third time and be passed. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor White, Discussion? Hearing none, this is the third reading and a recorded vote. All those in favor? It is carried. <clears throat> and moving right along. Resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Items to be discussed, purchased services. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Discussion? All in favor? This carried. We are now in camera. Resolved that uh, resolve that pursuant to section 152.4 of the uh, of the Municipal Act, this meeting be reopened to the public. We should be on Whoops. 16. Sorry guys, I didn't click fast enough. Resolved that this regular meeting of Council now adjourn at 9.10 p.m. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. All those in favor? Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, administration, for all your hard work and dedication. Have a great evening, everyone.